Julius Abure, leadership of the Labour Party, today fought back. And the meeting, over the meeting held in Uma here, convened by Governor of Ibia State, Alex Oti, and attended by Mr. Peter Obi and Co. They have cancelled the automatic ticket previously reserved for the party's presidential candidate and Ibia State Governor. And the Nigerian Labour Congress and LC says the Department of State Services, DSS, has arrested its leader, Mr. Ajayro at the Abuja airport as he was planning to travel out of the country. Hello everyone, warm welcome to you. Whatever you may be watching, this is Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Wakimaloe in Abuja. We are here for you. Uh, for some of your major and the top stories that we are following for you in the realm of politics in Nigeria. So stick around with me within this next 60 minutes or so, so that we can give you, bring you up to speed. But let's tell you, uh, one of the major stories making the round is that the Nigerian Labour Congress is saying that the Department of State Services, DDSS, has arrested its president, Mr. Joe Ajairo. Ajairo Sato being taken out the Namdi Azikwe International Airport in Abuja, earlier today on his way to the United Kingdom on official assignment. Head of Information of the NLC, Mr. Benson Oba, confirmed the arrest to China's television and the NLC president was billed to attend the Trade Union Congress Conference in London, which begins uh, today. Oba says the union does not know where Ajero had been taking, but he had sent a message saying it was a DSS that arrested him. So much to talk about tonight, including the issue of the pricing of petrol. And of course, the Labour Party has reacted firmly to what the decision of some of the leaders of the party, including Mr. Peter Obi, the governor of Abia State, Alex Oti, and a couple of uh, some leaders of the party elected on a platform of the party when they met in Uma here, where they uh, constituted a committee to midwife a transition in the leadership of the party to be led by a former minister, Nenadi uh, Usman. But before we get into all of that tonight, we'll begin to view some insight as to the warning to the federal government about the pricing of petrol and some of the consequences of the planned increase, of the increase in the petrol price uh, since the 3rd of September as won by the NNPCL. We're getting some insight on what the market is saying and what the issues are, especially from the labor unions. But before we get into all of that, let's check out some of your political write-up stories. The socio-economic rights and accountability project, Serap, says its Abuja office has been invaded by operatives of the Department of State Services, DSS. The Deputy Director of Service, Mr. Kola Wale Uluwadari, confirmed the situation to China's television, stating that no formal invitation was given to them before and after the raid, and they have no idea why the operatives raided their office. Sarah had recently given a 48-hour ultimatum to President Bala Tinubu, asking him to instruct the NNPC Limited to reverse the hike in the price of petrol or face litigation. This is simply uh, one of those incidents that show clearly beyond a doubt now that there is a severe constriction of the civic space, uh, not necessarily because of anything specifically we've said or done, but basically uh, because of transparency and accountability. I, do, I cannot recall any specific instance that might have caused this. The People's Democratic Party is warned against violent attacks and illegal arrest of citizens of Edo State ahead of the governorship election in the state. The National Publicity Secretary of the party, Mr. Debra Ologoagba, gave the warning at a media briefing in Abuja. Mr. Ologoagba calls on the Inspector General of Police to protect the interests of the people. Meanwhile, the federal government is asking anti-corruption agencies to embrace effective collaboration as part of efforts to curb the menace of corruption in the country. Addressing participants at a conference organized by the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission in Abuja, the Attorney General of the Federation, who was represented by a director from the Ministry of Justice, says the nation's fight against corruption must begin with shared commitment. The Attorney General of the Federation also advised anti-corruption agencies to encourage whistleblowing by protecting those who stand against corruption. A few days after speaking. 
If you women in Tava State took to the street to protest the alleged imposition of women leader at the just concluded PDP State Congress, another set of women groups have stormed the party secretariat in solidarity with the newly elected women leader. While passing a vote of confidence on the women leader, the group claims that there is no iota of disunity in the party and alleged that the factional group was sponsored to protest against the governor for choosing her as the choice candidate. Lastly, in Anambra State, the All Progressive Congress has withdrawn from the upcoming local government elections scheduled for 28 September 2024, citing irregularities in the process. This decision is reached after a series of meetings of designated committees raised by the party to look into the process of the election, as announced by the Anambra State Independent Electoral Commission during the party's stakeholders' meeting in Oka, the state capital. The Anambra State Chairman of the APC, Mr. Bastin AGDK, announced the party's decision to boycott the election and announced that the party will take legal action to challenge the election process in court. Thank you so much. Let's get to our very first major conversation tonight. And this is a direct reaction to the decision uh, for, by the NNPCL to increase the price of petrol, uh, otherwise known as PMS. And uh, this increase will take it to in the corridor of over 800 naira per liter, which uh, was earlier between 500 and 600 naira and in some parts of the country, they're saying it's now been sold at almost 1,000 naira or more. There are several reactions, including that of the Labour, asking that, that price should be reviewed. In fact, a lot of people are asking for the reversa, including trade unions, Congress, and the FSC. Well, the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Pro Project, SERAP, has asked President Bola Tinubu to direct the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited to immediately reverse the apparently, quote, illegal and unconstitutional hike in the pump price of petrol across its retail outlet. One of uh, the groups uh, that has been talking about is the Pengasa and the NLC, the TUC, but tonight I've been joined on the program virtually by the president of Pengasan and equals, or, I mean, also doubles out as a president of the Trade Union Congress, Comrade Fessas Osifo, who joins us virtually. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. Thank you so much, Shio. Um, good evening to you and good evening to your esteemed viewers. Uh, perhaps I, I should speak to you about your colleague and your brother, uh, Joe Ajairo, who is said to have been taken by the DSS. I see that your organization, the TUC, has reacted to that. Is there anything more you wanted to say about that? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Shim. Uh, because in the in, in union movement and in labor movement, we always uh, pride ourselves uh, by saying that injury to one, it, uh, it's an injury to all. So the uh, at daybreak today, the news got to us of uh, the ordeal that um, the president of NLC is currently facing. And uh, from our part, we have reached out to everybody beyond the press statement that we released condemning that act and condemning that action that took place this morning. We've also uh, followed up by reaching out to all the security agencies in Nigeria uh, to press home the fact that Joe Jero must be released immediately. Because all we are demanding is that let them release him unconditionally and he must be released immediately. And uh, we believe that um, before the end of today, uh, he will be released. Because they told us that they are continuing something that they will release him soon. This was about two hours ago. But before I came to this program, I made some calls again, tried to reach out uh, to um, both my colleagues uh, that are currently in Abuja and uh, the security outfit. They still assured us that they are going to release him. And we are hoping that in the next few minutes or few hours, um, the NLC president will be released. Because for us, uh, you cannot uh, silence the labor movement. Uh, the labor movement is one, irrespective, and we will continuously push to ensure that uh, the plight of Nigerian workers are the front burner. Uh, we're understanding that uh, Mr. Farana is saying that uh, today's arrest of Joe Ajairo is, uh, is, uh, is different from his invitation by the police. What more do you know about his arrest? Uh, yes, um, as of now, we don't um, we don't really know exactly the reason why he was arrested. Uh, when we called, we made calls to those that arrested him. They told us that yeah, that uh, they are interrogating him on some certain issues. 
But we asked, what are the issues? Uh, they did not tell us. But they said that by the end of today, that um, um, Joe Angelo is going to be released. So what is the issue that he's been arrested for? We don't know as of now. But we told them to come clean and, 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 and to be transparent in everything they are doing. Uh, just picking someone and putting in custody without talking to Nigerians, without telling us what the issues are for us, is not acceptable. And we have condemned that in all, in all ramifications. So as of now, we don't know exactly what the issues are i mean this uh, you see uh, some of these issues with the with the authorities with mr joe Ajiro, uh, i mean one would be wondering what exactly is it with the authority of the government and joe Ajiro? Uh, yes, so the authority just have to come clean, have, because you can't just pick someone and put behind bars uh, without necessarily telling us what the issues are. So imagine for the last two months, this has actually been going on. Uh, the first one, they said is terrorism financing. Okay, they've invited him, he went there. If there are issues, uh, are they pressing home the issues today? The answer is a no. Uh, so the second one, they said that disturbance to public peace that has been invited. Then this third one now, uh, we don't really know the reason why uh, they are questioning him at the moment. But in all of these, in all of these, we cannot really place our hand on anything because the police and the DSS, they've not come out clean to tell us what the challenges are, what the issues are, what they have found. Uh, so clearly for us, we are seeing this as a witch hunt. Clearly for us, we are seeing this as a clandestine movement to clamp down the, the voice of uh, the Nigerian workers. But this will not allow to stand, I can assure you that. Uh, um, we hope that we, we learn more about Joe Ajero's arrest. But it does look like the, the labor unions are resolute about one thing, about their own year action. There was an emergency meeting by the NLC today. We saw the, uh, the TLC's release also. Uh, and it does look like the tone of, of the communique released by uh, the unions signifies something that they are ready to fight back. Is that the case? Uh, yes. Um, when, when, when any of our members, irrespective, um, of the particular union it goes to, whether it's at the center or at the affiliate, whenever we see that there is an unjust cause uh, to clandestinely clamp such leaders, uh, the union must always react. I will not fold our arm and allow uh, one of the labor leaders to be to be to be so humiliated. So on our part, we are completely resolved. Both TUC and its affiliate, then NLC and its affiliate. So collectively, we we are resolved to ensure that we put a stop to all these and uh, let the unions face their business of defending the right of the workers. Shame. I tell, I mean, like I said in your program the last time, for every time we come to the street to protest, we are signing a hundreds and tens of collective bargaining agreement. We go from table to table negotiating, most especially in the private sector. So the union business is a very serious business. So we interfere on issues on a daily basis. I could tell you that today, Pengasan, for example, we're in a company called Nekondi in Lagos, and we... We picketed the company and we shut them down for some of the unjust acts that they have made to our members. Uh, but these are all done uh, without uh, shouting or coming to the street. Uh, no, we were there in the country and we shut them down. These are part of the functions of the union on a daily basis. But when we are distracted, uh, it becomes a challenge. And we urge the authority to just stop this and let's be focused on, 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 on our core mandate and, and the reasons why, why we are elected to defend the interests of the Nigerian workers. Let's go to one of a very uh, touchy issue here, and which is the hike in the price of petrol. Uh, we, we understand that your, uh, your, your organization, both Pengerson and TUC, deeply involved in some of these uh, conversations. First and foremost, you are one of those who is asking, uh, talking to government about the implication of the price hike. The NMPCL does not look to have any hopes uh, if the price is going to come down. In fact, there are those who are speculating that they might, in fact, it might go uh, more uh, uh, northwards uh, and that the things might, in fact, uh, remain the same for a long time. Uh, but the question will be for those of you who operate within the oil and gas sector, isn't these all foreseen before now? Uh, uh, Sheung, thank you so much for that question. I will, uh, I will switch 
between my heart as, um, as a TUC president, Pengasan president, and also someone who has spent about 20 years in this sector. Uh, if you remember clearly, I was in your studio some time ago, uh, December and early this year, and you asked me, is government still paying subsidy? I clearly answered you without any ambiguity that yes, that the government is still paying subsidy. There was also the program that was organized sometime in May uh, to celebrate uh, the uh, May Day uh, this year, uh, sorry, uh, to celebrate Democracy Day, so um, on May 29th. Uh, or rather June 12th, I can't remember the exact, it was May 29th or June 12th, but I was in your studio, and Maokwe and Chambali asked me a question regarding this. I came to the studio just immediately after the Minister of State, Petroleum Resources Oil, just left your, your, your station, and I clearly confirmed uh, that what uh, the Minister was putting forward was not really right. Uh, because um, as of that day, that there was subsidy, we are still paying subsidy. But that there was something that happened, Shem, at a particular time, you know, we saw the danger, that the clear danger in this, it is not in quote, the, the, the deregulation of the downstream sector of the oil and gas industry, this, uh, as it affects PMS. But the real challenge was devaluation. And I stated this on that particular day, that the conundrum that we are facing was devaluation, that as at last year september that when the price of uh, crude was about 80 dollars per barrel and also the exchange rate was somewhere around 750 naira to a dollar and the pump price of pms hovers between six to seven hundred that we were not paying subsidy as at then so as at that time subsidy payment was zero but as the exchange rate kept devaluing as the exchange rate kept moving from that 600, immediately hit 800, 900, 1,000, subsidy returned. And today, Sheung, the exchange rate is 1,600 approximately. So these had brought back subsidy. So as a then, what did we do as Trade Union Congress of Nigeria? And also from Pengasan, immediately we saw this. We saw the exchange rate moving because on a daily basis, we do the calculations. We know what the price of um, PMS uh, is, what, we, what they call plat. So we know what it was. So as of then, when we saw that the exchange rate was moving quickly, we met with those in the oil and gas sectors, the regulators, and we proposed to them that, yes, this, the devaluation, uh, the NARA is sliding down, and that the more the NARA slides down, that it is going to affect uh, the pump price or you will pay subsidy. But that what we are advocating is that government should give you, should give us in that sector a special rate. So that if government, for example, had locked the exchange rate uh, on this around 750 naira to a dollar, to today, there wouldn't have been any subsidy payment at all. So they did this for a while. They listened to us at a time. They did this for a while uh, before sometime this year they felt, oh, no, they can no longer do this. So that is actually the conundrum, the challenge, which we have stated over and over again, that the greatest elephant in the room is devaluation, that it is because of devaluation that is making the price of AGO, popularly referred to as diesel, what it is today. It is because of devaluation that is making jet A1 to be what it is today. It is also that that is making kerosene to be what it is today. So we have actually been crying that the more our Naira is allowed to be to slide down south, the more we are going to have this challenge. And that is actually where but, but we the question, have to uh, yeah. So there are those who will say you will uh, negotiating with the Nigerian government, uh, those who are on behalf of the Nigerian people in the labor union should have seen this coming. And perhaps also not only speculate, see the old picture of what was going on in the NNPCL and the fact that uh, there is still the burden of subsidy that has been carried in one way or the other. Uh, those who will say that it was a matter of time that the price was going to go up. I mean, those who say, why would you say that or think that this, we're not going to get to this point? It's that those who say, look, this is like deja vu. We saw that this was coming.
we felt this before, we've seen this before, it has happened over and over again. But Shemu, yes, correct. We saw it. I came to your studio on, uh, on several occasions, and I, I hammered on it on behalf of Pengasan and on behalf of TUC. We have consistently hammered on it. Uh, if you look at a press release that we did at the time, sometime in February and later on in April, from Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, we cited some of all these. Some of these press releases, Shemu, you also highlighted them in your, in your program. And so, we were not, for us, we knew that we are going to get to this point because of the challenge that the devaluation of Naira brought to bear. Shemu, if our Naira, for example, was exchanging at the pre-May 29, uh, 2023 rate of 450 Naira to a dollar, Shemu, PMS Bay would have been selling for the uh, around the region of 350 naira per liter. AGO would have been selling somewhere around 350 naira, 360 naira per liter. So it's very clear, Shemu. So for us uh, in Pengasan and also TUC, they did not take us on our words because we clearly knew uh, when these challenges were there. That was why before the price was adjusted, if you remember clearly. I came to your studio and I said there was a solution that we have proposed from Trade Union Congress of Nigeria. And that, that solution, that as at that time, that they are operating it. And what was that solution? Give a special rate of efforts to those managing the downstream sector of the oil and gas industry. So give that discount to them so that Nigerians will buy PMS at a reduced rate. So that was what we proposed as at then. And I can confirm that at the time it was implemented, even when the FS rate was hitting 1,000, 1,000 plus, uh, they were managing it uh, with a discounted FS rate. But today, that discount is no longer there. So did it take us on our way? The answer is a no. We were clearly, I mean, we knew what was happening and we intervened even before it got to so, this stage. So and Mr. it was Sifo, our intervention that made us to be yeah, buying PMS Sifo, at that rate till about a week or two ago. Yeah, you have suggested that the federal government should reverse that decision or tell the NMPCL to reverse the decision on the price hike. The question will be direct answer pay subsidy and we're going to be getting that money somehow somewhere but nmpcl has come out to say we can no longer be at the budding this is too much in fact uh, understandably that um we understand rather that nmpcl is owing about five to six billion naira in that burden that they have been bearing that is what you are asking for federal government you. go back to other price See, be paying subsidy or return subsidy fully. Is that what your organization is asking? Yeah, Shemu, Shemu, what we are asking for is actually what was done in the um, between October to sometime early this year. And uh, that position is very clear, Shemu. If today, if federal government ask NMPC, give NSPC a special rate, Okay, so you remember recently, it was announced that to Dangote refinery, that they will be selling PMS as crude to Dangote refineries uh, in, in Nara. And that the exchange rate that they are going to use is going to be 1,500 Nara to a dollar. And that that exchange rate is going to be lost. Why? You see, that government has given a special rate to Dangote refinery. Shemu, that is also what we are advocating, uh, that there must be a special rate that will be given uh, to uh, the operators in the downstream sector of that industry. If government today says, NNPC, we are going, um, when we are going to give you a special rate of, say, 800 Naira to a dollar. So if that happens, I could tell you that Today, they wouldn't be paying any subsidy. Because even with this adjustment that was done a few days back, there is still subsidy that is still being paid. Because the landing price of PMS today is in the neighborhood of about 1,001, 1,200 Naira. So that means today, there is still subsidy that is still being paid. But Pay if me. government comes out, who and is paying that? Where is that money coming from? Is it being appropriated for? Who is responsible for it? Which ministry? Is it the finance ministry or the Ministry of Petroleum Resources? Who exactly is, is responsible for that payment? 
Ah, yes, normally. It, it's a country, a country, a government. Federal government, for example, is the one that is managing the subsidy regime. Uh, both, as of today, uh, at the NMPC is the one carrying the burden because I've listened to lots of their releases and all that. So NMPC is the one carrying the burden. Uh, but what we are saying is that for that burden to be removed, for that burden to disappear, uh, you need to give a special FS rate to NMPC, just as you are given to Dangote. So when that is done, I can tell you that the price of PMS is going to go down, down south compared to where it is today. If that rate is fixed, then we wouldn't have this, this challenge that we have today. That yeah. rate was actually fixed for a while, uh, between October last year to sometime this year. That rate was fixed. So all we are advocating is that government should uh, fix that rate. Of well, well, let me, let me ask you, Mr. Osifo. You have uh, warned about the implication of the hike in the price. And you say that the disturbing news of the increase of PMS pump price all over the country has sent a wave of apprehension and depression across the length and breadth of the nation. And you have gone ahead in that statement to say there will be implication on the economy. You have also uh, said that as critical stakeholders were not consulted. In all of what you are asking or saying, what price would you suggest that the price, uh, the, the petrol price should be pegged? And that those who will say, if you are saying it, that means that the market force that is supposed to determine the price is no longer at play. Michelle, even with the price today, the market force is, no, is not at play. That is why you could see that it is difficult for the PMS from Dangote Refinery to come into the market. That is why you could see that Ipman and all other players in that sector, we have major players in that sector, we have Emadep, we have Matrix and all that. You could see that they could not go to Dangote Refinery to lift PMS and sell. Because if you buy directly from Dangote Refineries today, you will not be able to sell at the current pump price. So today, the market forces are not in, in play in any way. So for us, uh, what we have written in our press statement is that it should reverse back to where, what it was before this last announcement was made, at least. So you have to take that back. And to take that back, we have also suggested the mechanism with which you could use in managing that. And that mechanism for us is what we believe can be done regarding the price of um, the FS rate between the Naira and the dollar. Now, let me ask you quickly, if it doesn't happen, you are asking for a reversal. NMPC has said that does not look like it will happen. What would you do as an organization? And yeah, Shun, you know, we are, we are organizations that are, that are, that are ruled by, by organs. So we have three levels of organs as, uh, as far as TUC is concerned. And uh, we'll review this and we'll communicate to Nigerians. Uh, because for us today, Dangote Refinery um, has started production. So all the bottlenecks around the reasons why that product could not get to the market must be resolved. So that Nigerians will, will benefit um, attractively from this. And also, the other refineries as well, we're also putting pressure behind the scene as well to get the other refineries to function, to get the other refineries to work. So the pricing issues around Dangote Refinery and NMPC should be quickly resolved. Once that is resolved, we believe that there will be some benefit that will be agreeable to all this. But in terms of what we'll do, is the organs that will take decision on the, on the way forward on this. If this does not happen, you have uh, pronounced doom will reign if this goes on. How bad could the situation be? Because you have said in your statement that things are already bad, that the worst situation in the hardship that some Nigerians face will worsen. How bad could things be? If the reality is that we, there's no money to pay for subsidy or there's no way subsidy can be paid on any of these products, I mean, I mean, especially petrol, how bad could things be? What are you looking at? Shun, if you give a special rate to NNPC, you don't need to pay for subsidy anymore. The same special rate that you are giving to Dangote in, uh, to sell PMS for Dangote, a special rate was given. Before now, Shun, we have had our customs given special rates. 
So that special rate should be given in that sector. Once you give that special rate, then it will be better off. Let me quickly give you an instance, Sheo. Today, if, for example, you approach Dangote with the sale of crude to Dangote in Naira, and you decide that that crude price that you are selling to Naira, the exchange rate will be 1,000 Naira to a dollar. Do you know that if you do that, then all marketers can go to Dangote and pick PMS and sell at a reduced rate compared to what is practicable today? So it is about that exchange rate. Uh, so that is what we have propounded over time. The, but overall, in terms of the implication, Shemu, you have listened to Neta, you have listened to Lagos Chambers of Commerce and Industry, you have listened to Nasima, you have listened to players, both in private and in public sector. Uh, Neta told us that if they continue in this, that a lot of companies are going to shut down, that a lot of companies are going to fold up. Uh, Nasima said the same thing, the SCCI said the same thing. For us in TUC, what we have said is very clear that if we continue with this line uh, to allow PMS to keep spiking and going up, uh, the artisans on the street, the welders that are down there, the barbers, they will all start closing their shops because uh, maybe people will start getting uh, clipper on their own to remove their hairs at home. So this is going to percolate down um, across the length and breadth right. of Nigeria. So but our, our position clearly is that um, the, the effect of this will reverberate across the length and breadth of our dear country. Are we likely to see the labor unions get into the street to protest on this one? Is that a likelihood of what could happen? Our organs, will, our organs will take that decision, yeah. Thank you so much indeed, Comrade Fester Sosifo, who uh, doubles as the president of Pangasan and that of the Trade Union Congress. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. Thank you, Shebo. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. So th there seems to be so much more to what is happening in the Labour Party. So the Julius Abure-led Labour Party today uh, made a very dramatic decision, which is to cancel the automatic ticket it previously reserved for a party's presidential candidate in the 2023 election, Mr. Peter Obi, and the sitting governor of Abia State, Mr. Alex Oti, for the 2027 election. Well... They made that decision today after the Abure leadership of the party uh, held a National Executive Council meeting in Abuja. The party says that it has thrown open all its tickets from the presidency to the House of Assemblies to all qualified Nigerians. Well, let me allow you to listen to um, Mr. Abure today when he addressed that uh, press conference. Those who should stand with us in the fight for a better, restructured, organized and united party have chosen a different path. A path not of unity, but of division. I speak of, of course, of the illegal gathering that took place in, in Abia State, an attempt to create a rift within our party, led by no other than His Excellency Peter Obi and the Governor of Abia State, Alex Chioma Oti. This meeting held without the authority or consent of the National Executive Council and sought to install a so-called new leadership. Let me be clear, this action was not just illegal, it was a betrayal of everything. Well, those decisions or resolutions made were premised by what you heard Mr. Abure just said. But this is coming after some leaders of the Labour Party, including Mr. Peter B, Ms. Uh, Dr. Alice Oti, and some elected senators and members of the House of Representatives that held a meeting in Uma here, the Abia State Capital. It was at uh, com uh, was convened by uh, the, the governor of, or hosted by the governor of Abia State, where they appointed a 29-man uh, woman-led <laughs> caretaker committee uh, by a former minister of uh, finance, Nenadi Usman, and they're supposed to midwife. They gave them a terms of reference. They're supposed to midwife a new leadership for the Labour Party, and that's why 
Mr. Abure and his colleagues there in the leadership are not happy. It does look like all the tickets for any of the elected position have now been thrown open. Let's speak with Mr. Kainde Edun, who is the legal advisor of the Labour Party. Thank you so much, Mr. Edun, for joining us. Thank tonight. you very much. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Why does it look like you, uh, Mr. Abure, and some of your friends in the leadership are behaving like a military uh, regime that likes... Uh, a sit tight that behaves like a sit tight uh, because uh, there are those who believe that it does look like your time is over as a, in the leadership of the party. And that is not true. Uh, Baris Rajulo Zaburi has only been in office for a period of three years. He became elected in 2021 and we should recognize that his election in 2021 was at the neck that neck was necessitated by the demise of the former national chairman, A. A. Salam, who died in office. A. A. Salam was elected in 2019. His term was to run until 2023, but he died in office. So, and there could be no vacuum. So that neck was called in order to fill the vacancies that occurred as a result of the death of Alaji A. Salam of blessed memory. So, Barista Julio Zaburi became elected to complete the term of A. Salam. Became elected in uh, March 2021 to complete the term of A. Salam that was to expire on June 9, 2023. So what we are saying is that that was the term that was in June, in June 9, 2023. But because it was just immediately after the 2023 general elections, the party the, uh, at the level of neck met and decide, decided that it was inauspicious to have a convention at that time and decided to extend that tenor for 12 months. And that ran until June 9, 2024, before a convention was held. Well, I mean, all of these timelines that you have given, Mr. Yes. Aydon, you yes. do know that has come with its own crisis there those there was a time that the apapa uh faction of the of the leadership also held sway and also were pursuing an agenda of taking over the leadership of the party because of the court uh, a ruling that they got and now there are those who will say there seems to be some vacuum there seems to be some trouble that is not really allowing the party to move forward there is in fact an order of court that, is, that, that also is putting uh, the leadership of Abure in the balance. There is no order of court against Vilos Abure. How many, how many order of court do you know that is subsisting there on is, this leadership? There is Abure? no order of court against the leadership. There, you, are you saying that there are no litigation there are over, cases, there over are, the leadership of Abure? There are always cases in every political party. No, I'm, talking, but, I'm not talking about every political party. I'm talking about in Abure Labour party, yes, there are and cases, the Labour Party crisis. There are cases in court, but I make bold to say there has been no order against the leadership of, uh, of Julius Abure. The only interim order that was obtained in uh, April 5, 2023 was set aside and nullified by the Court of Appeal. So as far as the, the law is concerned, that order never existed because the court, said, the court of Appeal said that order was obtained uh, without jurisdiction and that the court that gave that order ought not to have given that order. So the implication of that is that there was never any order against the Julius Zaburi led National Women Committee totally of the Party. Right. But in fact, uh, in fact it's, a, it's a recent uh, order coming from the court. And if you say you are not aware and you are supposed well, to be the legal... There is no order of yeah, I'll give you the details of that or uh, the court order. But mm -hmm. then there are those who will say, uh, why are you angry with uh, the Nenadi Usman Kiatika Committee? Yes, let me explain that. That Kiatika Committee is no committee. The reason is that that gathering no more here is inglorious, it's incongruous, it's shoddy, it's inappropriate, it's unlawful, and illegal. Well, the organs of the Labour Party are clearly defined in the Constitution of the Labour Party. There is no organ like stakeholder. And if any meeting of the Labour Party is going to be called, our Constitution is clearly 
is very clear about it, that the meetings of the National Convention, National Executive Committee, and National Working Committee shall be called by a notice issued by the National Secretary in consultation with an approver of the National Chairman. It is so clear. So what they have done in Umar here is an unlawful assembly. Yes, they gathered, but that was not an organ of the party. They were only on a frolic of their own, and they could not make any decision on behalf of the Labour Party. They could not set up any committee on behalf of the Labour Party. So, well, these are members of the party. They could decide to meet, and they, have, they met, but they cannot make any decision for Labour Party. They cannot set up any committee for Labour Party. So we are not saying we are angry with any committee. As far as we are concerned, there is no committee. The National Executive Council of Labour Party, led by Baruza Juda Abude, is in place, it is functioning, and it has the authority to lead the Labour Party. So what they have said, what they have done, that committee, is, as far as we are concerned, it is not a committee of the Labour Party. It is clear that only the National Executive Committee of the Labour Party can set up standing or article committees of the party. So how, where did that come about? So as far as we are concerned, there is no committee led by Nenadi Osman. So, I mean, you look at what is going on, and those who will say this is uh, an, an interventionist move by the elected members of the party who are uh, the ambassadors of your party. And it does look like you and uh, Mr. Aburi and your friends in the leadership are now being left alone. And it does look like you are now... Uh, uh, seen as personal non grata that is because not correct. if you say were well, you invited to that meeting now let me explain to you was the uh, abu leadership yes. invited to that meeting let me tell you, but, but why didn't you people attend let me explain to you that meeting is a failed meeting first of all look at the people invited they invited the national working committee no member of the national work committee led by abu attended they invited uh, the elected members national assembly members we have 36 members of the House of Representatives. They have only three in attendance. Look at that. Look at that. You can see that that's a failed meeting. They invited the NSC and TUC. No member of the TUC attended. You can see that it's a failed meeting. How many people do they have? Do they, have? they also invited some, maybe they said the former governorship candidates and all that. So what you are saying, that's a failed meeting. In a, we have no member of the National Committee of Labour Party in attendance. We have only three of 36 members of the, national, of the House of Representatives in attendance, and maybe about three senators in attendance. That's a failed meeting. So when they saw that that meeting failed, they only went inside and announced maybe two names and said there. So as far as we are concerned, it is a failed meeting. It's another failed attempt to hijack the leadership of the party. So, so we are not part of the party. We are not disturbed. It's another failed attempt to hijack the leadership of so the party. So you don't think that this is, uh, there's, a, there's a need for child of necessity? when there is a vacuum or a crisis there is no the vacuum in the relationship of labor party there is no va no vacuum ever existed and there's no vacuum there can be no vacuum in what is going on in your party this back and forth that is happening in your party yes we understand what that. are you and the abure and the rest afraid of is it possible for you to throw your heart in the ring if you know that you are popular enough to retain the seat that you are currently occupying if there is the need for any convention, we we'll do it. But when the time of office of the national officers are still subsisting, there is no need for any other meeting. If that term uh, terminates, yes, there is a meeting, and we are not afraid. A, a political party is a democracy. We have to understand that. And the majority rules. In a democracy, majority rules. So we cannot concede to illegality. We cannot concede to uh, some people arrogating authority to themselves to call meetings and fix, saying they are making decisions for the party. There has to be the rule of law. We have to abide by the constitution of the federal government of Nigeria, by the electorate, and by the constitution of the party. That is clear. We are not afraid of anything, but we are saying the National Working Committee and the National Executive Committee of the Labour Party, of, led by Julius Abode, is still very late in office. And so there is no need, and nothing has happened. The meeting in Abuja, in, in Omoahia, they are the frolic of their own. So you look at it and you, you wonder, uh, can you lead the party without the people in the party? The people and in the party are at, still in touch. Well, what, what I've just said is that... What is Labour Party before 2023 
without uh, Peter Obio after 2023. They are still members of the party. We are not saying they are not members of the party. As but many people as want to If they don't the agree with what is going on in the party and they want to move the party forward, and they constituted, they took this move to, to move the party forward, it does look like uh, the allegations, therefore, uh, some members who belong into that group who are saying that some of you are being sponsored by uh, fifth columnists, those that do not want the progress of the Labour Party. Is it, does it look like you are affirming their fears that, that there are those who have hijacked the Labour Party for ulterior motives? We don't believe that. That is she blackmailed by very few people. Majority of Nigerians believe in what we are doing. Majority of Nigerians understand what they are doing. And majority of Nigerians know that the meeting in Omar here cannot represent the likes of Kenneth uh, Okonkwo. He's just has, an individual. He, I mean, he has. Let's open an individual. Well, he has spoken for the he campaign. He can say whatever he, he can say. He said that yes. your, 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 the clique of the leadership is uh, has a problem, as is a fundamental clog in the wheels of progress of the Labour Party. Kenneth Ogo is an individual. We have over 200 million But Peter Obi does not look to agree with you. Alex Oti does not look to agree with you. The candidate of uh, Lagos State of the Labour Party does not look... Because those that were there who voted we have, and wanted the We have government candidates in 36 states of Nigeria. So if one or two government candidates are saying something, we, we cannot take, take that as a view You don't of see the that a, a vote of no confidence mm -hmm. that have been passed on you on your lead, on on your sort of the, a group within the leadership of the party is very loud and clear with the kind it of people. It is not. What I've told you is that we have 36, 36 House of Reps members. How many of them were there? Only three. Is it? Is, it is a, that a good percentage? We are it, talking about less than how many? What is the percentage? It looks like less a, than ten percent. It, it looks like a fight to finish. When, when you, you are having a just ten, remember, less than ten percent of people taking you, a decision. You, it looks like you were, you and Abure and the rest are really ready for a fight when you now say that you have withdrawn their automatic tickets? We are not fighting anybody. If, like I've told you, a political party is a democracy. If certain undemocratic pronouncements have been made, we continue to refine our democracy. We continue, democracy is about liberty, it's about level playing field, it's about the rule of law, it's about opportunity for all. If a decision has been taken as to teach the opportunity for people to participate. You know that that decision is undemocratic and it can always be reviewed. We have, we, have, we have to continue to make democracy better and better. And that is what we are doing. It is not asking anybody. It is to make democracy better by saying that you must open up the space. It is undemocratic to limit the participation of people. For example, if somebody says so. Oh, but oh, why did you take that decision in the first place when you knew that it was undemocratic? Is it now because they... They wanted you out. That's why you now saw the light and felt it's that undemocratic. Is this has been, in, this has always been in the pipeline. You let gave them you, the automatic the mind, tickets the before now. Let me tell you something. The mind of a philosopher, they say it's like a bird in flight. You continue to cut forward, cut forward, backward, and still make progress. That is the mind of a philosopher. It's like a bird in flight. So in the, in the democracy, you continue to how can we make this thing better? That is why there is always refinement. So we think that we should make things better. And I think these are individuals who are even happy about it, who are happy that they, are, they should be able to subject, to submit themselves to competition. They should be able to, to, to ensure that they make democracy better. These are, we are talking about, these are Democrats who are really happy about such decisions. Are you, are, are you guys not afraid in the leadership that if you took that decision, you are probably chasing the likes of Peter Obi Alex Oti, out of the party. I don't believe that. These are Democrats who, all, who have always believed in fair competition. If they decide to leave the party, isn't the party in trouble? I don't think so. Why should the party be in trouble? They are, you know, you, cannot, you cannot stop anybody from expressing his, uh, his, uh, his wish. And I think they love the party. They are going to remain in the party. And they are going to enjoy and they are going to also promote Fear competition. What party. plans do you in the Abure leadership plan to uh, give the party a proper structure? The party is growing every day. Every day the party is growing and we are making the party better and better. How? Without, without Congress at the, at the different levels, ward, local government, state? Congresses will be held as at when, as at when do. You see, what the mistake people are making is that before 2024 constitution of the party, 
the tenure of office of world, local government, and state executive are only three years. And the tenure of office of national officers, four years. So if you look at that, it does not fall into, you see, the, the, the time for the national convention does not necessarily mean the time, the, some of the, some, uh, the time of the world executive, the uh, local government executive, and the state executive will, will, will expire. So that is the thing, but we are some now... Of the, some of the obedience are not quite happy with Abure and some of the... Uh, many of them do not understand the party very because well. Because these are the obedience by the ones who supported Peter Obi. And if they are angry, they believe that uh, some of you in the leadership of the party are actually being used by opposition forces to disrupt and to decapacitate the Labour Party. But Why are you towing that line? That is not true. We are here, we are encouraging everybody to come in. We have built the party even before these people come in. The obedience, many of them do not understand the running of the party, but many of them are coming on board now, and we are making them understand how the party works. And today, many of them are fully with us, and they understand us. And I believe His Excellency too, now uh, I've seen what we are doing. And I think there should be no reason for him mm. to feel that uh, we are chasing anybody away. There's no reason for him to also feel that we have anything against him. Because today, what we have just done is to make things better, to make the working of the party more democratic. So you want Peter Obi to no... succumb to the leadership of the party? The party is supreme. Peter Obi has not said that he's not going to work with the party. He has never said that. All right. Kendi Adun is a legal advisor of the Labour Party is in speaking about some of the development. Thank you so much indeed for Thank your time. Thank you tonight. very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much everyone for watching. I'm Sean Wakimara. I'll see you tomorrow, God willing. God bless Nigeria. <laughs>